Scott Jordan and Mark Warner here for Jancast number 157 for Thursday, November 9th, 2023. Oh, November 9th, man. It's good. Christmas is coming. Hey, Mark, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Yeah, it's hard to believe. We're uh, we're talking about everything we're trying to do now to close out a good year. Yeah. And yeah. It, it seems like we were just in the middle of summer. So it's right. just time flies. And and to all our customers out there, thank you, thank you, thank you, because we've seen a major uptick in uh, the amount of work in progress we have here in the last month and a half. So I don't know, maybe we're coming out of something, huh? I think it's because of GenCast.com. Uh, absolutely. You know. <laughs> yeah. Well, we're talking some high tech stuff today, but we've well, talked high tech the last time on the last. Yeah, time. this. It it all started with our GenCast number 156 yeah. with John Hill. And that was talking about things like embracing disruption. It was talking about things like uh, the IBIS World Survey, mm -hmm. which talked about the fact that all this is trending towards the use of robotics. And, and he got into like the whole high tech part of it. And yep. so when you kind of shared with me the higher tech stuff that you uncovered, <laughs> I thought that would be fantastic. Well, it's kind of, it's in the same realm. It's in the cleaning industry, kind of. Uh, <laughs> I wouldn't exactly sure say it. Well, it was, actually, it's probably from a technology standpoint, this was not easy. So, Mark, do you know what the number one problem consumers have with toilet paper? Well, like before we go there, we do know that the number one complaint that people have about bathrooms yep. is not cleanliness and odor it's yep. lack of supplies so yep. i don't know i guess people don't like to use their hands <laughs> but talking about supplies um i really don't technically know the number one complaint that people have I, about I, I must toilet admit, paper i must admit i have noticed it now that it's pointed out and we're going to talk about it it happens all the time, and I didn't really like make a mental note of it. But okay, so does that? Can you see that? Yep. You see what? See what that is? That's a tail. That that's an incomplete tear. <laughs> and you know, it's the perforations go across there, but invariably you get that. In, so so when you're thinking you're getting two pieces. You're really only getting like one and then two thirds because part of it's left up on the other section there. So Charmin, uh, which is part of Procter & Gamble, came up with this new idea. Uh, it's a, it's called smooth tear. Uh, and what it gives you is a wavy edge. We'll put a picture down below. And it's just, I mean, mind boggling. And then I didn't realize from a technology standpoint, you know, if you think about it, they've been doing they've been doing toilet paper perforations the same way for like the last however long they've been making toilet paper, I guess. Right. Um, well, they they said in the uh, the article that it goes back 100 years. So yeah. it's a 100 year old technology using a 90 degree angle of perforation. But that was done because. And I was fascinated by this, yeah. hearing that the toilet paper actually runs through the the spool, gets extruded and runs through the spool at 60 miles an hour. Yeah. yeah. And um, I guess the technology 100 years ago was only able to do the perforations at 60 miles an hour, as long as it was uh, kind of a 90 degree angle. Yeah. And that's what's created the incomplete tear has been around for a hundred years, Scott. A well, so hundred it, year complaint about toilet paper. So it took uh, Charmin and P and G five years and thirty patents to come up with this wavy edge toilet paper. So I haven't seen it in the wild yet, um, or in the bathroom that is. Uh, <laughs> so we we'll have to keep an eye out for it because yeah, it's uh, you know. Pretty, pretty interesting. So along the lines of new technology, unless you got something else to say about the wavy, the wavy edge, Mark, I don't want to cut. Oh, you, you know, I, 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 stuff. the only other thing that I kind of picked up on that is you think about a company as large as Procter and Gamble and, yeah. and a brand as ubiquitous as Charmin everywhere in the world, they have six plants and each of those has multiple lines and 
this change over to the Charmin brand, to the sculpted smooth tear, they call yeah. it. Way, way um, the edge. Yes. <laughs> they literally had to do that on multiple lines. It's six plants wow. to roll it all out at the same time. And so I started thinking about the logistics behind that had to be a challenge as yeah. well. Yeah. It's what not do, like they're do? just. What, what do people do with all the old inventory that's not the wavy edge anymore or the, the new one the new ones uh, the wavy edge but what do you have to throw all the old toilet paper out because it's got a straight perf well I, I I think at this point it's only Sherman brand that's offering the wavy ones yeah so well they all they the have, competitors now are going to go what well, they, what have 30, have they have 30 patents on it so I don't think anybody else is going to have it oh so. uh, they might come out with like the razor's edge or the you know the <laughs> the tooth or, fang or just cut an angle. Yeah. or an <laughs> angle yeah. yeah yeah who yeah. knows well speaking of uh, additional technology related to toilet paper i uh, oh. you know we're doing our extensive research uh, on subject matter for jancast because you know we do try to be innovative and cover stuff that people wouldn't normally run into so and you know we're big in odor control right mark with our eric's brand and everything else so uh the second technology news for use of toilet paper is, have you ever thought of putting a roll of toilet paper in your refrigerator? And we all know about the baking soda thing. I mean, that's there's a whole cost benefit analysis between the difference between putting a roll of toilet paper in your refrigerator and the baking soda thing. Apparently baking soda lasts uh, three months where a roll of toilet paper only lasts. But who would have thought you put a roll of toilet paper in, in your refrigerator to, to absorb odors? Well, I was surprised that apparently this has been a, a kind of a hack, a trick yeah. used by a hotel, the hotel, the industry for a while. Yeah. And I didn't know that. And I, I think I might be disgusted if I opened up a hotel <laughs> fridge and saw a roll of toilet paper in there. Never happened to me. But um, <laughs> apparently they're the ones that developed the trick. Yeah, well, the important news is, and then it doesn't get damaged. So once it absorbs all those, I, I don't think they actually do. They no, take they it, said, put they it said, back into no, the bathroom. They, su they suggested in the article that you should not use it as toilet uh, paper uh, afterwards because it's going to have an odor to it. Uh, thank goodness. Okay, <laughs> that was that was running through my mind. So, so if interest anybody's interested, we'll put a link in the uh, in the show notes uh, below, uh, uh, along so, with that the link to that entire article. And because yeah, I know people want to read more about it, I mean, obviously it's yeah, it's groundbreaking. And, and speaking of reading and speaking of articles, um, Scott, you were just written up in uh, ISSA today. I just got this in the mail yesterday. This is the, I guess this is the show issue. It's show slash. 100th anniversary issue and um yeah I open it up and not that it's a surprise because because they submitted stuff for this but there's a really great article here about the presidential commentary thoughts strategies and predictions from those who served as issa president so it's a really great article it's about four or five pages long gives a little brief uh uh, synopsis of each of the presidents uh, and you know where they came from, how long they're around, that type of thing. And then then later on, it also gives us gives us a chance to do some quotes. Uh, so very 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 good very good article. Um, and then I also get written up again the future of the industry. Um, yeah. And it's not just in different uh, toilet paper uh, perforations. <laughs> well, the future of the industry is something that you actually did a summary of this past week as yep. well on the SSB. Yep, yep, yep. Yeah, for those of you that don't know about it, um, we published and we have been publishing since 1998, 25 years, every Sunday, the what we call the Sunday Sales Blast. And it's not necessarily about um, Jan Sam related stuff. It's all about how you can become a, a better salesperson. Uh, your team can work better uh, to provide what your customers need and, and all that. So if those of you that aren't subscribed to the Sunday Sales Blast, we'll put a link uh, in the show notes for that one as well. But um, there's a lot, a lot of stuff coming down the down the road. And, and last week's Sunday Sales Blast was a prediction of what's going to happen in 2024. This this article is even further out than that. It's looking at 10, 15 years out. So it's very, very, very interesting. But 
some of the stuff we've been talking about is you know, uh, technology-driven cleaning, green and sustainable practices, uh, health and wellness-centric cleaning, you know, all the stuff that we've covered in previous shows. So, uh, yeah, a lot of a lot of good good stuff going on between our Sunday sales blast and and everything that's in the ISSA today. So, way to go, ISSA. Well, and that's not the only thing in ISSA yep. today. If you page through it, you get to uh, another little article in there about yep. Bill. Yep. Yep. Bill Bellick. Uh, for those who don't know, Bill Bellick is the most famous person at ISSA because he sets the the rules and regulations for the <laughs> association every year at the business meeting. And Bill, uh, if you're listening in, you know that I love uh, the updates to the um, minutes and everything else that you do. And uh, Bill's retiring and we're hoping that we'll get Bill on uh, for a future Jancast. But Bill's done a great job uh, with, I make make a little fun of it, but he's always been a great source for Bullen, at least, uh, for regulatory compliance questions, issues. Um, Mark, you and I both work with him. You work with him when you're at ISSA as well. Yeah, yeah actually, um, I'm really grateful for my friendship with Bill. He's yeah. helped me a lot over the yeah. years. Yeah. So, so more stuff in the in the sh this uh, ISSA well, today as well. It's that's just a treasure trove of stuff. <laughs> and it's, uh, you know, the timing is particularly unique because they're getting that issue out just yep. before the ISSA show. And there's other people being recognized at the ISSA show. Yep. Um, you know, one person that it that just jumps out is yep. the Honorary Lifetime Achievement Award going to John Garfinkel. And um, John Garfinkel, for many, many years, was kind of like the the face of the ISSA and the yep. ISSA shows. And obviously, he had a fantastic team yep. that supported him in that effort. But he did that for, uh, like, I don't know, it's the, more than five decades? Is that uh, 1991 true? to 2015 is what the... Uh, okay, 91 to 15 is... Yeah. Uh, 20 plus years yeah. so yeah. um ish <laughs> so that is pretty fantastic that he's yeah. getting a lifetime achievement award yeah. and way to and, go john you're yeah way to go john definitely well deserved one of the other big awards that is uh kind of a big deal that happens at the issa show every year is the jack d ramalli award which is for the uh, industry Distinguished Service Award. Scott, you know anybody that's ever gotten that? I just so happened to have one right here. How about that? What a coincidence. Uh, yeah, in recognition of the outstanding service to the cleaning industry. I was fortunate enough to get this in 2015. My dad also got it. And I have a picture up top. Maybe I'll put that in the show notes as well. I actually got this from Jack and John was there as well. So I have a picture uh, receiving this actually from Jack Romali, who was a great friend of, uh, of the industry, family, my family. Uh, uh, yeah, so great, great honor uh, going out to, to the award on that one. So that this year is going to Ilham Kadri, who is yep. the uh, founder of the ISSA Hygiene Network, which is aimed at empowering women in business in the uh, janitorial and sanitary maintenance industry. Yep. She's the CEO of Solvoy and past CEO of Diversity. So a uh, very, very accomplished woman for sure. Yeah, And uh, she's receiving that award for, I think really not just her, her career accomplishments, but for being the founder of the ISSA Hygiea Network. I mean, yeah. that's that's been... Um, that's gotten a lot of attention. Pretty cool. Yeah. And then the other awards they give out are the uh, uh, Manufacturers Rep Awards. You know some of these guys. Yep, yep. I, I worked, uh, Keith Angel was getting it this year and uh, I worked with Keith. Uh, he was on, I'm pretty sure he was on one of my boards uh, or I was on, I mean, I was on a couple of different boards. Uh, I remember exactly what year it was, but uh, know Keith well uh, and uh, he's been in the industry for 30 plus years. So uh, good, good, good for him. The other award that's coming up is the uh, the Next Gen Rising Star Award, and that's kind of done in honor of Jimmy Core. Jimmy Core is uh, uh, was a very cool guy that I knew mm -hmm. that left us far sooner yeah. than he should have. So um, it was sad. 
Yeah. Um, but the fact that the industry continues to recognize him is very, very cool. And it's going this year to uh, Travis Caldwell, who yeah. is involved with uh, director of sales, in fact, and government uh, business with Imperial Dade. So, Travis, congratulations to yeah. you. Yeah. And the other uh, Rising Star of the Year award is one that's given out by Hygieia to um, women that have actually followed, you know, the lead. And and this is going to Elizabeth Hover of mm -hmm. Essity. So um, congratulations to all you. Yep. Hey, Scott, let's give them a round of applause. So. Yep. For those of you that are going to be in Las Vegas, they're going to give out these awards we just talked about on Tuesday, November 14th at 9.15 a.m. Uh, and you'll get that info, obviously, in your show show materials that you'll get when you're in Las Vegas. So have a great show. It's next week, uh, the 14th and 15th and is next week. So I'm um, Looking forward to hearing the news on how the show went and everything else. Um, it uh, should should be a good one. And the next Jan cast, who knows? Maybe Bill will reach out to us yep. and agree to being our VIP guest. That's right. Well, thanks for tuning in, and I hope everybody appreciated the tech news from toilet paper to everything else. <laughs> thanks, everybody. Okay, see y'all. <laughs>